I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta. Today on the show, we have the sexy, the gorgeous, the luxurious Latina diva, Jessica Wilde is here. We talk about hair flips and tortilla chips. But first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be Fairy Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who knows the clear difference between a deal, a bargain, and a sale. But first, let's get into some things that are Very Delta. Do you have a friend who has a friend that you can't fucking stand? I think we all do. And I think it is so fine to have a space like this where we can just acknowledge that. Because I know it's so difficult to talk to other friends about that person, right? And sometimes it's not even someone that you fully just cannot stand. Sometimes it's as simple as someone you just don't understand. You don't understand why those two people are friends because you know why you're friends with that person and you know why other people are friends with that person, but you can't understand why you're the only one who has a problem with that person or doesn't understand that person or is so confused why your friend is so compelled by them. Because if your friend is so compelled by you, what is it about them that they love? And what is it about them that everyone else is like, oh, I don't know. I never really think about them. They're just whatever. Like nobody else is as bothered by them. And I feel like in all of my friendships, there is some relationship where I'm like, what is that? Like what? I don't, I'm so confused. Like that's where for sure in my bones, I know the phrase, who's all over there really comes from. Because I know that in my family, and I would like to say in my group of friends, every time we talk about a gathering or going to Not Scary Farm or going doing anything, it's always, who's all over there? Who's all going? Because I want a clear list of all of it. That way, if I have to step away from whatever it is, I can totally do that. And if I need to create some narrative like, oh, I can't go because I have an appointment to get my eyelash extensions or, oh, I can't go because that's when I wash the hair on my ears. Like I, if I have to create a story, I will create a story if I think it's going to make everyone else comfortable. Like I know there's so many people out there that say a lie is a lie. And I Absolutely agree, but I think there are levels of lies. I think if you create a white lie because it's going to make things easier for everyone else and you honestly don't really care and no one's going to get hurt, I say go ahead and do it. Clearly, if you're doing something malicious, that's a little bit different. But I do say it's odd for me to be in relationships where I think I'm very open with people, but I'm unable to have a conversation about the elephant in the room, which is I don't like that bitch. That bitch does not like me. Why are we in the same room? How do you like this bitch? I'm so confused. That's the type of person that you always say you don't like. Yeah, all of a sudden you have room and space for them. And it doesn't dawn on you that every time we're all around, that person won't speak to me. That never dawns on you. That is so bizarre to me. And I know there's friends that won't say anything. They'll all sit back and they'll be like, I ain't saying shit. 
because, and I hold the space for you. Maybe you have a great relationship with these people. And I'm saying not everyone is people that I absolutely abhor. Like it's not that. It's just, I'm confused as to what the two of you are getting out of this friendship with one another when it seems like one is contributing and one is just taking. And, you know, I've always said friendships, romantic relationships, family relationships are never going to be 50-50, and I don't think they should be. This is just my opinion. You can hold whatever opinion you want. However, when it comes to personal relationships, sometimes it's 90-10. Sometimes you need somebody more than they need you in that moment, and they have everything you need. Sometimes it's 40-60. Sometimes it's 70-30. Sometimes it breaks down into the specific, you know, it, it breaks down to minute amounts. But you give and you take and you ebb and you flow. It's just so strange, though, when you stop and you assess and you're like, I'm not understanding here. Why is it that you are hanging with this person? I just don't get it. And no one's talking about it. And like I said, you should be able to talk about everything in your friendships, right? But why sometimes is it like there's a final frontier about certain people or certain things? It just seems weird. Maybe that's just me. M maybe I I'm the only person on the planet who feels this way. That could be. That's fine. I have anxiety problems. Whatever. I don't think I'm the only person. I think everyone has at least one person in their friend group or their family group or their chosen family group, whatever it is, where they experience this and they're like, something's not ringing right to me. Something is not adding up. Something doesn't resonate. You never like people like that, but all of a sudden you're in their cheeks. I'm so confused. Like, why are you in their cheeks about that? And it doesn't dawn on you that they talk to everybody around except for me. But then you're always like, oh, you're the real one. Like in the movie Bridesmaids, there's like the new friend and the friend from way back that are sort of battling it out as to like, who's the better friend? I'm not battling it out. I'm not going to do that. You either know I'm your friend or or not. I'm not going to explain myself or, or do any of that. And I get it. It's a movie. But I feel like our real lives are sometimes the movie in our mind as well. And we are like, I don't know if that person just doesn't like me or I'm imagining it, but they don't fucking talk to me and I don't talk to them. So then when I try and I get that like, <laughs> no, baby, because I can read body language. I will say this till the cows come home. No pun intended. I can smell bullshit from a mile away. And I can tell you what color the cow is that's creating the bullshit. Do you know what I'm saying? I just know it. That is my sixth sense. I can tell. And the thing is, we all have friendships where we do different stuff with different people. I have friends that like to go camping together. And I don't feel left out because they invite me. But they just know she ain't going to be into this. She's not into this. You know, I don't go camping unless there's a gift shop. I don't go camping unless they're going to replace the towels. And that's not me being all that. That's just because I'm a, I like creature comforts. I'm fucking lazy. I'm not going to do all. I'm not going to lay on dirt. Like I'm not like that's just me. And that's my other friends. And they love it because they're they want to be in tune with nature. and They want to feel the earth beneath their feet. And they want to live off the fat of the land. Fucking go for it. Go for it. Go eat mud pies or do whatever. Like, I'm so down for you, but that's not for me. I also have friends that like to go to Vegas. My friend Jules loves to go to Vegas. You know, she spends all her money gambling and she loves to go. And she's like, oh, I got all these rooms. I don't want to stay in those rooms. I don't want your bread. I don't want your rooms. I like to stay where I can drive up, go in, check in, check out. I want to have a little locals only diner. I like to go to like the little cheapy hotels and I know people are like, oh, but they don't have nice foyers and this and that and the other. I don't want it. I want convenience. So my friends know that they, uh, they know that I appreciate the offer, but listen, I'm not parking in a structure and then walking across this and going over the promenade and going into the people mover and then going like this and deciding if I want to be in the tower room or the garden room and then go over here and then walk down a long hallway and then go all the way over here and realize when I want some fucking ice, I'm going to have to do that all over again. Just so that I can sit in a room and go, wow, that's a really pretty vase. I don't give a shit. I appreciate it. I love you. It's just like when I go out of town and people are like, oh, we've got the room for you. Like the, the gig is going to pay for the room. Just give me the money. 
give me the money, give it to me in a stipend, and I promise you, I will handle it. I don't want to go stay in these places. So my friends know that, right? So they're like, cool, no tea, just know that we're offering that to you. And I appreciate that. So they can stay there, I can stay here, and we can meet at the Pepper Mill in Vegas. All good. Um, I have friends that just like to do other things. And I feel like in so many ways, we don't have to lie to each other. We just say, I am not going to go to that event with you. I appreciate the invitation, but I don't like being around a lot of people who act fake, right? So I'm not saying you act fake. I'm saying you like an open bar, so you like to be there. And you're willing to put up with the fake people. I don't want to go there because I don't want anything to drink. And I don't want to stand the whole time. And I don't want to scream because you know there's going to be those people that come up to you and the music is fucking blaring at an, at an event or a nightclub. And it's so loud. And there's people that are trying to talk to you. And they're like, I should be sorry. Bitch. And I'm like, uh-huh. Oh, no, totally. Oh, my God. Bitch, I know that's right. Uh-huh. Oh, girl, you know how you are. Uh-huh. I can't hear you. I'm just telling you. I can't hear you. And if you can't hear me responding to you, or it seems to you like, that doesn't seem like a very succinct response. That doesn't seem like a directed response to what I'm saying. Just know that you should go up to the bar and get you a drink and just start dancing. Because I can't, I'm not trying to be fucked up. I can't fucking hear. And I think it's not that I, it's not that I have a hearing problem. I think a lot of people just want to focus on what you're saying. I want to be present with you. I want to have a one-on-one. -on -one. I want you to know that I'm understanding what you're saying. I'm listening. I'm hearing. Both of those things go hand in hand. And then I'm processing it. And then I'm answering you. If I can't do that, then I'm being fake. So I don't want to be fake with you. I also have the toughest time when people go, just create small talk. I'm lucky for this podcast because I'm a nosy person. And I love to learn things about people. So I don't really have small talk with people. I will ask somebody straight up. I'll find something about them and I'll ask them about it. I love this blouse. Do you have a lot of things in this color of blue because it's unusual? Is that your power color? I'll ask someone, what do you like to eat at the movies? Especially if I just heard them say in a conversation, oh, I just went to the movies and I saw The Passion of Christ and I love Jim Caviezel, even though he's fucked up, he was really hot in that movie. And I'll say, oh, that's great. You know what else is hot? Fucking sugar babies and popcorn. What do you like to eat at the movies? Would you like to eat those or would you like to eat out Jim Caviezel while he's on the cross? You know, I don't like to make small talk. I don't like going, oh, this weather sure is. I think that's disingenuous. And here's some small talk. Oh, what about this weather, huh? Oh, it's crazy. Oh, I remember this restaurant when they had really good service. <laughs> Isn't that parking crazy? I know. Looks like we got here just in time, huh? Oh, I gotta go. Do you want to see us take a break? Because I think you want to see us take a break. My guest today is the sexiest doll from Puerto Rico. You know her from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 2, All Stars Season 8. It's the one and only Jessica Wilde. Yes, here I am, Jessica Wilde. Que scandalo. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy to be finally here at Berry Delta. Yes. It's been a minute. We have not worked together in forever. I but know. you know what? You belong to the world right now, and the world belongs to you. You've been traveling everywhere. I've been traveling. I'm very busy. My schedule is crazy, but it's a blessing. I'm just like performing, hotel, airport, hotel, flying, um, interviews. I've been very busy, very, very busy. But I'm happy. Yeah. I work hard. You know me since too many years, and you know I've been working hard. Very hard. And yeah. this is like my my moment. Well, it really is. And I think uh, I think people who love Drag Race and love the, um, 
the contestants from Drag Race love to see people from seasons, um, some of the earlier seasons, be celebrated and watch how far they project into the future. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you hit the ground running and people love you because you're authentic. You're always Jessica. And, and I don't want to say you have the brand because it's not a brand. It's your soul, who you are. I think I learned to love myself more and more now that, that I'm wiser and mm -hmm. I am finally 21 years old. Right. Uh, Takes a while. <laughs> you know, I love myself. I'm a good person. Uh, I do what I do with my heart. I love to entertain people. That That's what I do drag, like to make people happy. And because I love to be a dancer, a makeup right. artist, a, a, an, an actress, everything. With Jessica, I'm everything. And yes, I'm just happy. I'm a happy person. You are. You are a happy person. <laughs> did you, um, like, did you know off the bat when you were going to go to All Stars, did you say, yes, I want to go? Or was it something you had to, like, think over? I was thinking. Yeah. It's a scary call, especially f for someone from season two. I felt like too many years apart. Right. Uh, drag is so different now. But it was my opportunity to right. be back on TV, to have the opportunity that this new generation of queens are having. I was like, I know I deserve to be at RuPaul's Drag Race Live. I, I, I should be in Australia traveling. You know, that was my biggest motivation. Right. Like, don't let your fears stop you because I was like frozen. Sure. I was, and you know me. You know that I always tell you how I feel and those those days that I had like the call and everything. I, I did it and I don't regret it. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you did. <laughs> yeah, because the world wants to see you. They want to see um, the next level. They want to see Jessica 2.0. They want to see Jessica 3.0. And you're constantly doing that. You're constantly giving people what you love and that is entertaining people. What is the wildest, what is the Jessica wildest thing that you uh, have been doing or seeing since you've been traveling? I mean, I know you like to I know you like to go out after if you can. I know you like to have a cocktail because you love this drink. I love that drink. You love many different I, kinds of drinks. I love drinks. You know, like I was in Chile and I felt like those years when Menudo used to have concerts or Michael Jackson. Yeah. Because I have to go to the airport like right after my show. Oh, okay. Like that. So I started walking from the stage to the car that it was going to drop me off at the hotel. In that little short time, even when I was inside the, the, the car, all these fans like, bam, 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 and wow. excited. And I was like, wow, you know, all this love is crazy. And I love that because you bring when you're on stage i always feel like every show has to have different kinds of numbers it could be an impersonation it could be dance it could be a ballad but it has to all fit together and you bring that excited frenzy when people want to remember something from the show they always remember the show that you are in because you draw people in you make people feel good you do songs that make people feel good you know what i mean it's something that is just have, did you, as a kid, where did you find yourself as a performer? Yes. Yeah? Since, since I remember, I was doing shows for my family. I used to do, like, like puppet shows. Oh. I, was create, I, I used to create okay. puppets. I used to draw superheroes. All the time, they were females. Uh-huh. And my mom told me that once she, she took me to the psychologist because I was just drawing females. And the oh. psychologist told her, I think you need to step away from him because I think he see himself in you. Mm. And my mom said, but it's my son. How am I going to just step away from him? But yeah, since my, my mom always knew that I want to be an artist. She didn't know. She didn't know mm -hmm. or knew? Either one, because okay. we know what you mean. She didn't know that I was going to be a drag queen because me neither. Yeah. <laughs> but Madonna is one of my biggest inspirations, Paula Abdul. So when I create Jessica, it was like kind of based like 
on those artists. I like I love to dance. I like to be a professional in what in what I'm doing. I take this very serious. Right, you do. And it shows. What do you think like as you were saying going into All Stars drag is so different now. Do you what what do you see as the difference between say season 2 and season 15? And maybe not the contestants but just drag in general. Well, like 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 the joke the that we always say, like those years, who who have the best Forever Twenty One dress? Right, right. <laughs> it was more about, you know, like you didn't pay attention how your makeup looks or how perfect is your hair or if you are padded or not padded, or or who made your outfit. It was all about you, right? Your persona, like like your drag, and. I was scared to be back and to be compared mm -hmm. about, oh, look at this queen, what what she's wearing, and look what Jessica is wearing, or look how she look and look how Jessica look. And then I just realized, but this is me. This is who I am. And this is a competition. And maybe you can have a great outfit, but maybe I'm going to be better than you on the challenge. Right. So I just have to be myself. I just have to have fun so I was there having a good time I didn't came back 13 years after just you know to be uh to, to feel less than anybody right I went there feeling amazing yes I was scared sometimes it's normal but I didn't show up that I was there fighting to reach my goals and I'm very proud when I when I see all stars I'm feeling very proud of myself. Yeah. And we're proud. I mean, we love it. Is there, I, I can't, every time I look at you, I can't help but wonder, I mean, glitter lip is one of your signature things. Yes. Is there a glitter lip color that you have not worn? Never green. Yeah? Green, maybe if I do something more Jessica from the space or something like that. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you have a, a special trick to getting that off? Duct tape. You do? Yeah. <laughs> Because it's it's faster. If it I start cleaning with a baby wipe or whatever, you know, I'm gonna have glitter all over my face right. for days. So with the with the duct tape, uh -huh. it's easier. And you know who teach me that? Mariah Paris Balenciaga. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. okay. I think we all we all teach each other like uh, new tricks. Absolutely, it's the best way to learn. Yeah, it really is. Now, do you ever like? Look at yourself the next day, and you're like, "Oh, there's something in my tooth," and it's like, "Oh, that's glitter." <laughs> yeah. You think maybe it's pepper, but it's glitter. It can, it can be all over my pillow. It's everywhere, all over the house. You left it all over the world. Yes. Yeah, I feel like you avoided my question about what wild things do you do. <laughs> Why you go back there? Because I know you're crazy. Also, it's, it's more about wild moments. But this is a PG-13. No, it's not. No? Triple X. But I am. <laughs> you nasty girl. Actually, no, I've been a good girl. You you know what? I believe you. I do believe you because you are an open book and you will tell people. Yeah, there's something about you that is not, that's so different from everyone else. And that is that you will romp around and have a wonderful time privately. And you don't use it as a badge of like, I did this, this, and this, and I want everyone in the world to know. And I love that. I love that. You're so, you're not just respectful of everyone. You're respectful of yourself. I yes, love that yes, about I you. Am. You really are. And you're a slut, which, you know. But I'm a respectful she's slut. She's a respectful slut. Yeah. She has um, spread her seed all over the world. Not just this country. All over the sea. Yeah. All yes. over the sea. <laughs> She'll be back to being a whore and sledding <laughs> after this break. Yes. We are back with my friend Jessica Wilde. You know, everybody knows you for Escándalo, right? Yes. What is the proper way to use Escándalo? How can people use that in their everyday life? If I had to use it one time today in, and I worked in an office, how could I use it? Well, you can be, like, if you look great, I can be like, this is an escándalo. See, I love that. Escandalosa. Or, yeah, usually when, when something is great, you're like, escándalo. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Would that be the name of your perfume? Maybe, yes. Or wild. 
Mucho escándalo. Uh, what would it smell like? Because what kind of perfume? Well, I know what your perfume is. I know it, your number one. Because I always, my good, good girlfriends, I know their perfume. And I know that, like, they may wear something else sometimes, but they have a signature. And it cannot belong to anyone else. And I own bottles of their perfume, but I just won't wear it because I'll smell it. And this is going to sound creepy. But, you know, I have all my perfumes in my dressing room at home now that I have enough room for it. And I look at it and, and I have, since I moved in last summer, I've pulled out your bottle and smelled it because I haven't seen you. And I'll smell the perfume and I'm like, it's Jessica. It's nobody else but. No, and the thing, the, the, the funny thing is I order the perfume to give you like a, like a brand new one that I know you're gonna say like it's your scent, but I was like I know you like it. I love it. And I was I only have a little sample. It didn't came on time. Huh. huh? Now you're gonna need it. You're gonna have to take so it now, on tour. Now I have to darn to wear like spice, old spice. <laughs> oh, that's what people tell me. Oh, you smell like old spice. <laughs> but um, your uh, your signature fragrance, the one that I'm that I wear since I start doing drag. <laughs> Do you, you want me to say the brand? Of course, they want to know. Arden Beauty. Mm -hmm. um, my mom used to wear that perfume, and to me, it was always like, like, like it smelled beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm more like a floral person. I don't like to smell like a candy. Mm -hmm. I like it in other people, but I, I like like flowers, and I think it's elegant. I think it's interesting because. You can really look culturally at how many influences people have for drag. And we are very influenced by the women in our lives. Yes. You know what I mean? We hold our mothers really, really in the highest regard. And people will tell me all the time, you smell like an old Mexican lady. And I'm like, thank you. That's not an insult. It no. feels great to hear that because it makes people feel comfortable, right? And so when someone says, oh, you remind me of my aunt, I love that. Yeah, it's great if somebody says, ooh, you look like a sexy supermodel. Well, I would love that too. Yeah. But there's something special about somebody saying that and not saying it to someone else, you know? Yeah. And sometimes when I change my perfume, I don't have the same compliments that when I wear the Arden Beauty. Right. So to me, that's my scent. It is your scent. Seems forever. What about when you change wig color? Does that make you feel differently? Oh, yes. When I wear black hair... That's the OG Jessica. The slutty Jessica is black hair. Okay. The Jessica the dancer, but kind of look like myself out of drag because I used to have my hair long, like like a Pocahontas look when I was a dancer. Oh, okay, I never knew that. Yes. So so at some point I stopped wearing the black, and now wearing the black again, and, and every time people see me, oh my god, I like you with dark hair looks so good. You look, like, wild. Would you ever do, like, bright red? Yes. Jessica Rabbit, something yeah. like that. When when I dress as La Veneno, right. it's, like a, it's like a red. Which I red. love. You I, like my coconuts? Oh, my, I love your coconuts. <laughs> I love them. Um, I want to go back to, everybody knows you love this drink, but you love snacks as well. Oh, yeah. Right? So much so... That you are the only girl from RuPaul's Drag Race who has her own bag of snack chips. Tell us about the tortilla chips. I have my tortilla chips. Mm -hmm. Yes, guacamole is not included because it's, no. it's expensive. Right. It was supposed to be here in the bag, but I think you're going to put it in my hand. <laughs> now, what goes best with the chips? Guacamole, salsa, red salsa, green salsa. So, so I, I gave um, the chips to Alisa Edwards. And she was like, where's the salsa? So I have to create the salsa too. Do you make salsa? I will. That'll be the I, next thing that you bring yeah, out. Yeah, for my I need my business to to grow. Right. You do. Actually, I was thinking about this. Everyone knows you for a uh, berry acai drink, but what's really your drink? It's not that everywhere. Uh right now, white wine. Okay. I'm like, and people Oh, they always see me with the with the glass and they are like, oh, so fancy. And I'm like, baby, I get trash with this. <laughs> like, I don't need tequila. Mm -hmm. Actually, if I drink tequila, I'm more relaxed. Really? With the wine, you can see me kind of messy. 
He can, but but he's fun. You like that. Um, you know, you've been talking about how you've been like bus, club, next club, airplane, bus, club, bathroom, bathhouse. No, no bathhouses, but you've been traveling. <laughs> glory holes. Glory hole. <laughs> Setting up your glory hole. Glory hole. Glory, glory hole. hole. You know, that's my song. That is your song. That's my song. That is your song. Well, because you love a full 80s playlist. That's your thing. Yes. I love 80s music. Like, touch me, touch me. I want to feel your body. I yeah. love, <laughs> I love it. I love that you love that. When you were on tour just recently with Selena's titties, in Australia, yes. Did you have your like ears in? Were you listening to that? Were you listening to show music? What were you listening to? When I'm getting ready, is that I listen to like to the '80s. Um, if if I'm with, you know, with people that is more from this era, I try to be, you know. <laughs> nice with them and play like Bad Bunny and the stuff that they like these days because I like every music. Uh, but when I'm in my private, it's going to be always like 80s. And I have a play an 80s playlist that also I know when, when it's like Vogue from Madonna playing, I'm late. Oh, that's smart. It's like you're late. You should be almost done by wow. Vogue. Wow. It helps me. That's a really, I never really thought about that. Like you could sort of time yourself. Yes. That's really, really fucking cool. <laughs> now, when you were in Australia, was it your first time there? It was my first time. I, it was an amazing trip for me. I met beautiful people and I was sharing the stage with Selena Stiris. Hi, Selena. I love you, sister. We became even closer on stage. We, we talk about it, like, let's do something that is not just Jessica or a STD show. Let's do something that people feel like like we are a group, you know? Mm -hmm. like, like we rehearsal this together and we realize that we should be on tour more often because we match. And, right. and the crowd, the messages after, they were like, oh, my God, you both together brought a lot of energy. And it was, we did that. like a concert. It was like more than 30 minutes like of Selena and Jessica. I love that. Yes. How long was this tour? It was like six cities. Okay. And so how many bags would you say you would take for six cities? I had like, I think three in, in, in my backpack. I think Selena had like four. <laughs> well, that's nothing compared to Jimbo. <laughs> you know, wow. when I, when I was in um, where I was, I was in Colombia uh -huh. with my three bags, and I was complaining like I'm sorry that I brought too much, but I've been I was in a cruise uh, in other cities, you know, and my boy stuff, and they said no, no worry, Jimbo brought like twenty. Oh, stop! <laughs> and I, think? but you know she have one for her. Body, one for her shoes. She has a lot of big wardrobe. Yeah, she yeah. Wore hard. yeah. But you know me, I'm more in panties and and a bra with rhinestones. That's and... me too. I usually just wear panties. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. I, I like to go topless, so I don't wear any of that. Um <laughs> tell me about the Teletubbies at DragCon UK. Teletubbies. When I got the call for the Teletubbies, I was like, yeah, fun, you know. Let's let's do this, uh -huh. and they they request me the song. It's like, uh, can you can you do, um, break my soul by Beyonce? And I'm like, yes, yeah, I, I like that song. Let's do it. So I don't know if you seen when when Beyonce is doing, you don't break my soul, right. and her breast is jumping. So I wore my coconuts, mm -hmm. and when they saw me in the back like doing my move, someone came to me. Oh, can you please slow down that move? Because it's bouncing too much and it's the Teletubbies. Oh. You know? And I'm like, but I'm not performing for the kids and I'm just dancing. Are you going to ask a female like Beyonce, like, stop dancing because right, your right. breast is bouncing? You know, I'm a woman. And you know, mm -hmm. and that person was like, okay. But you know what happened when I was on stage doing my one of that huge coconut came out and I, stop it. And I felt like naked yeah i was like and i saw everybody's face you know like but it was part of the fun it was planned you did that on purpose no i didn't you did it on purpose because you're a slut 
I am. Um, I knew we were going to get to this. But we're I was get to the root of this. I was trying to not be in a slut, but I think it comes natural from me. It's in your soul. It's in my blood. It's not fake. Um, what about MTV ridiculousness? That was a fun one. Yeah. I was a little concerned because, you know, like no matter that I don't care about language barriers anymore, I still get scared a little bit. Like, sure. oh my God, I hope to understand, especially comedy. It's totally different like from Latino. So I was like, I hope to understand what he's going to talk about to me. But when I was there, I'm like, just have a good time. And I'm proud. One more thing that I'm proud of myself. Yeah. Like, invite me to anything. I can be maybe a little bit scared, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it right. I'm going to do it the best as possible. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being great. Do you think you should have a Jessica Wilde MTV show? Oh, yes. Yeah, what would it be? I want to have, like, a show, like... Iris Chacon from the, from the 80s. Mm -hmm. Did you know who's Iris Chacon or no? I know the name, but I don't you know, know her show. Iris Chacon, it, it, it was a vedette. Mm -hmm. So her show, she had like music videos. She was dancing like like seven dancers and something very tropical, but also comedy sketch, interviews. There was a lot of that format back then. Yes. And people love it. Yeah, so... If, if I have a show like that, if I can do all that in 30 minutes. You can. You just did it in Australia. <laughs> That's yeah. And Selena could be on board with no, that. No, I can, I can dance. I can give you a full show. But, you know, when you when you want to have, like, everything, right. like the comedy, music, um, interviews, maybe, yes. Uh, actually, in Colombia, I was supposed to perform just two numbers. Mm -hmm. But I want to give them more i don't the contrast say too fine but i'm here i came from far I'm, I'm with my latinos let's give the you know they love concerts latinos we love concerts give me four numbers give me from do me amanda miguel uh -huh. five songs that i can wait to right. see you doing it uh and what happened is the oxygen in bogota you know bogota is high right, right. First minute, I I almost fell, faint. Oh my gosh! I can I cannot breathe. So they had a machine for me, an oxygen machine, and I was uh -huh. like, ba, 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 ba. but people. And how did you do it? Huh? Do it again. I was like, <laughs> okay. Would you ever do that with poppers? <sighs> with poppers, it's gonna be more like. Do you do one nostril? And then the other nostril, and then the other one again? Or do you just go like this and breathe it? I think I need to go to school to do all that that you teach me. You're too young. Let's take a break. <laughs> We are back with Jessica Wilde talking about wild times. Um, this is the part of the show that we call Read Me Delta. Read Me Delta! Anyone that wants to send a letter in can send it to readmedelta at gmail.com. Uh, questions, queries, um, if something is going on in your life and you need advice, send it to us. You never know who's going to be here. Yeah. The first letter is... Hello, Delta and Ambrosial guest. My neighbor's flute has become a problem. While I wish this pertained to their skin flute, unfortunately, it regards their study of woodwind instruments. Okay, so like a flute. I work from home and at least twice per day, my paper thin apartment walls are permeated with a cacophony of flute exercises, not melodic, not eloquent musical arrangements, shrill, repetitive, uncompromising exercises. After letting this fester for the past two years, the amount of space that I hold for my neighbor and their flute is reaching its limit. Lately, I've expressed my grievances by playing music at a noticeable but within reason level the moment I hear their flute and I promptly stop once they finished. While I believe this message has been received on their end, it feels as though we're at an impasse. Do you and your guest have any other creative or non-confrontational ideas to help convey my annoyance and pettiness? Or do I simply need to hold more space for my neighbor's flute? Sincerely, very Matthew. What should they do? They work from home. The neighbor is practicing the flute. 
It's so loud, it's bothering them. No, I remember I had a problem with a neighbor like years ago. I was on the third floor. She was on the first floor. The neighbor from the second floor never complained. Actually, she even came out to rescue me because I was kind of on a fight with the neighbor from floor number one because mm. I used to do my rehearsals in my apartment. Okay. So I was like, but how the neighbor from yeah. floor number two is okay. But but because of the music, so I have my I had my music, my radio on the floor and all these people jumping. So I was like, you know, let's just move the radio to another place. But we ended up in a good terms, but I don't like to live with anybody under or on top of me, no. But also my best friend now in Puerto Rico, Claudio, hi. He lives on a second floor and these new people move on the first floor mm -hmm. and they give they teach classes of instruments. And a few days that I was staying at his house, it was all this noise, like a circus music. And, and I was sleeping like, where I am? All this, it was like super loud, but kind of cute. But my friend went to complain and now they are complaining back like, oh, your dog or your. Oh. So I think sometimes it's good to talk about it and other times it's going to end that up bad. Right. Very Matthew, I wish I had an answer for this that was succinct, that could tell you exactly what to do. I have been in this situation before. I've lived in an apartment above someone. I lived in an apartment below someone. I've lived in a house. And it is very, very difficult because you have to walk this interesting line between the fact that you know you have to live next to these people. Mm -hmm. They have to live next to you. You don't want any problems. And sometimes, you know, they, they probably just literally think that the music is beautiful and it's probably not. Because <laughs> yeah. maybe they're learning. I think, unfortunately, you're going to have to hold even more space for them because you do not want any kind of confrontation with them. I don't even know how you come up with a conversation like that. I, I recently spoke about problems that I've had with my neighbors who have done like disrespectful things because on one side I have like disrespectful neighbors. On the other side, I have really, really cool neighbors. I was telling um, our friend Gabriel um, in the back about um, the neighbors that I have that I think they run like a construction company. They have a beautiful, beautiful backyard set up with like outdoor cooking and everything. And they have parties all the time. They will have mariachis <laughs> till four o'clock in the morning. Oh my, yeah. They will have a DJ until seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. But he always comes over and he's always like, hey, we're having a party. I just want to let you know if you want anything to eat, you want anything to drink, just come on over and help yourself. And that warning alone, That's first true. of all, yeah. you don't have to warn me because I love the music and we're going to have a good time and it's Saturday. Why would I say anything? Yes. But then when you're inviting someone to come over and have food, of course, like, that's <laughs> lovely. So I don't know, maybe make better friends with the neighbor. Maybe you become, like, you, the two of you yeah. became friendly. Yeah, I think maybe the, like communication because also it's, it's your house. You don't mm -hmm. want to be at your house like angry or sad every time. Maybe you could go over and not even start the conversation about the flute. Start it about something else. Like, yeah. hey, I, and, and it could be something simple. Like maybe you go and you buy some cupcakes or something and you're like, I made these. Of course, you're going to replate them so they don't know. And then maybe you start with that and go, oh, I heard you playing the flute. And then you could tell them that you work from home. And maybe somehow it comes up in conversation. Not the first time. The first time, just lay the groundwork. Or maybe, maybe you give them a drink. Like you, you make something. Maybe you make some horchata. Yeah. And then you put Visine inside of it. <laughs> and then you tell them that this is your family's special drink. And you'll say, you'll love this drink. <laughs> I love that drink. Mm -hmm. And they'll never be able to do anything but shit all day. <laughs> Hi, Delta, an iconic guest. I'm 21 and non-binary, and I absolutely love the podcast. It gets me through my horrible job. Speaking of horrible jobs, I need advice. I really want to go the fuck off on my coworkers on my last shift. I've experienced transphobia and homophobia. However, I'm afraid of ruining a potential reference to include on my resume. Mm. Should I let my lazy, rude, ignorant, mouth-breathing coworkers have it? Or should I keep my own head down and leave gracefully? Thank you for frying the small fish. Love, very autumn. Mm. That's tough. What do you say? Um, I think 
maybe just leaving because that's right you know then you go to another job and that curse is gonna be you know like 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 a dark cloud on top of you and mm -hmm. your resume i don't think you can stay in a place like that because if they're permitting what they're permitting now and i'm not saying you're letting them do it i'm not saying that you are inviting this and i'm not saying by any means that you should but you know you're trying to survive You, you need your money, you need, you need, you have bills, you have needs. So I understand having to be somewhere and allowing it to be there and trying to put on blinders to it. So sometimes you have to do that. But if you can at least get to a space where you can find another job, and baby, I'm telling you right now, if you've spoken up to other people about this and nothing's being done about it, do not give them a two week notice. Fuck them. They're not going to give you a two week notice when they kick your ass out of there. Yeah. They will get rid of you in a second because there's a million people in line for that job. And I'm telling you right now, I don't give a shit what job it is. They're going to get rid of you. They will get rid of you. And if you feel like the higher up people are going to permit this, you might as well jump. You might as well. I know it sounds scary. Sure, maybe stick around for a couple of weeks just to get a little bit of something, but you've got to line something else up. Put your feelers out there. I'm telling you right now, I know there's something. You cannot be in a space like this because it's not just going to be this like little burr on your side. It's not going to just be digging in. It's going to get into your yeah. anxiety and your depression and your state of mind and the way you treat other people. And all of that is going to develop physically because as we know, anything that that screws with you like that starts to show physical results where you start to manifest a rash or a sickness. Yes. It happens. It really, yeah. really does. And there's got to be a way around it. You've got to rely on your friends, your family, somebody. If you have to put up a post on Instagram and your story and say, I need help. I'm scared. Is there somebody that's willing to talk to me? You have to be transparent in that way. And really, I think it, sometimes turning to social media is important for some people saying i'm scared i don't know what to do somebody's listening somebody's listening and thank you for letting us know to give you an, an advice like you said delta like we've been um in different jobs it's not that i've been uh jessica wild and traveling my whole life and i remember when i left my my job at macy's everybody was like but you have a great job but i i, I wasn't happy Right. I wasn't in a good place and I just did it because I want to be focused on my artistic career. Right. And here I am. Autumn, I, I, I really, I really hope you're able to find your way out of this. I know you are. I just don't know the intricacies of it, but, but you deserve better than this. And you cannot be in a space that's making you scared. Before you leave, can you send us a message so we can get your discount? Because I don't know if it's at a store, you know what I mean? <laughs> Can we get something? Um, and if you do decide to leave, rip that whole fucking place apart. You know what I'm saying? Steal all the toilet paper from there. Make these people's lives fucking horrible and leak all the information you possibly can about all of these people. Make Take notes, baby, and leave them in a shit quagmire the way that they've been treating you. Yes. Fuck that. Yes. Pick the apple. So, and bring it here. This is you grabbing hold of their hair. Autumn. I got you. Say it like that to them. Very nice. And give them dirty looks. Dirty looks make people feel awful. There's things you can do to make them feel as the way that they've made you feel without insulting them. Every time they say something shitty, just ask them straight up. Are you comfortable saying that out loud? Are you fine with that? Did you intend to be hurtful or is just this something you do? It'll make them really uncomfortable. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It'll make them really uncomfortable. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy to be here, so Delta. Here. And I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of you. Look like we have not seen each other for you have. I love it. I love being here. Do you like this flower arrangement? I love the flowers. I made it from Dollar Tree. I, I love everything. I love the flowers you have on top of you. Raja made this for me. Raja, She yes. Did. It's my Easter bonnet. Um, thank you so much for listening to and watching Very Delta. Our show comes out every Monday. Subscribe to Mom Podcast YouTube channel and turn on the notifications so you do not miss an episode.
Search for Very Delta on your favorite podcast apps to listen to the audio only version if you can't handle all of the visual of this beauty right here. You can also sign up for premium offerings on Mom Plus Gold by visiting mompodcast.plus where you get weekly episodes of more Very Delta. Don't forget to send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram at DeltaWork. And where can people find you on social media? Jessica Weil on Instagram. That's where they'll find you. Until next week, keep things very Delta. Escanda. To listen to Very Delta ad-free a day early and to get access to more Very Delta, sign up for Mom Plus Gold at mompodcast.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work. Production supervision and engineering by Margot Padilla. Editing and post-production by Doug Robertson. With original theme music by Will Pitts. Executive produced by Willem, Alaska, Big Dipper, Camille Stennis, and Joe Cilio. Oh, fuck! Fucking bitch! Fucking bitch! Mom!